Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on creating a tile material in V-Ray for Rhino. This video is one of a series of videos I'm currently doing on material creation in V-Ray and I'm going to be using this courtyard scene here and we'll be applying our tile material to the red and orange surfaces here. Now I'm going to be rendering this window view and you can see currently we've got this grey material applied to these walls. So we're going to start by creating our tile material and I'm going to open up the V-Ray Asset Editor which is found under this V icon or under the V-Ray Asset Editor panel. And we're going to go to the Materials section, click on Add Material and we're going to create a new generic material here and we'll call this Tiles. Once that's been made we're going to select the material and click on the small right hand tab here to open up our material creation editor. And we're going to start by creating the look of the tile under the diffuse settings. Now luckily V-Ray has a built in tile map for us to use for this. So if we click on the small checkerboard box next to diffuse and scroll down to where it says tiles under 2D textures, we can add in a V-Ray tile here. and I'm just going to stick with this generic tile setting which is this orange colour tile with a 4x4 four four tile grid there. So if we then click back you'll see that's now applied to my material and what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the object I want to apply it to, right click on the tiles material and apply to selection. And now we can do a test render of what that's currently looking like in our scene. So let's load that up and have a look. So you can see here that that tile material has now been applied to my wall. And it's essentially just a wallpaper of that 4x4 four four tile. The size of this tile would depend on the texture mapping of the object we have. So currently I've got a 3 meter by 3 meter texture map. And if you haven't texture mapped your object, this might be a different size. So in order to check what that mapping is and what that size is, we need to select our object, go to the properties panel, the small rainbow window, scroll along to this cone under texture mapping and if you haven't applied a texture mapping apply a box mapping here. Once you've done that you can then specify this XYZ size to the specific size of the text you want and I'm going to keep mine at 3 meters by 3 meters. It says 3000 here because I'm in millimeters as my unit currently. So once that's been applied and we know the exact size of our map we can then start to fine tune our material. So I'm going to go back to my asset editor and what I'm going to do is we're going to keep this interactive renderer on so we can see the changes as we change the material. So if you want to go back and start to edit this map again, I'm going to just click back on this blue square and you'll see once that material has been applied, it's now blue instead of gray. That essentially tells us that there's a texture currently in that slot that's being used, which is this tiles texture. So if we click on that, we can open up the editor again. And here we can change the number of tiles. So we can change it to eight by eight there. We can change the color of the tile. If you wanted a red tile instead of that, or a blue tile here, we can vary that. We can also change the color variance of the tile, which is really useful for creating a kind of sense of uniqueness and randomness to your tiles. So if we up that to a value of one, you'll see it gives a slightly different tone of blue to each of these. The stronger that is, the more contrasty that variance is. And I'd recommend keeping it a kind of one or two for the variance. It's usually nice to be used in a sort of subtle way as well. So as well as that, you can change the random seed, which is essentially the kind of placement of those tiles too. So if you don't like the exact placement that it gives you, you can just scroll around through there until you find one that kind of works well for you. Um, as well as the tile settings, we also have the mortar settings down here. And by default, it will give you a mortar color of gray, but we could change that to a white mortar like so and we can lower the cap of the mortar, which is essentially the thickness of that mortar, down to a 0.1 potentially, if you want it to be a lot slimmer line. So you can vary the thickness of your mortar line using this value here as well. Now, what we can also do is if you want a slight texture to your tiles, you don't want it to just be a block color like mine have, 
We can also add in a map into the tiles as well. So if we click on the small square next to that color tile, and this time we can add in a bitmap, and I'm just gonna add in a concrete texture into here to give my tiles a bit of textured color. And you can see there that that's now been replaced. And what it's done is it's essentially overlaid my tile grid onto that concrete texture, but it's keeping that variation the same, but it just gives us a little bit of texture to the color of the tiles. Now it might be you don't want this to be gray and you want to keep this as a nice blue tile, for instance. Um, and to do that, once you've added in your image, before you hit back, if we go down to parameters and to color manipulation, there's this option here called color gain, and this allows us to essentially give the concrete texture a bit of color before we load it into our tile material. So if we click on that color gain box, and then we we'll scroll down to this blue again, and I'm gonna give it a nice sort of light blue color there. And you can see here, it's slightly mixing with the gray, so it might be a little bit more dull, but that's just because it's sort of mixing with that gray tone there. And I'm gonna make it slightly more blue. Something like that, I think. And there you can see it's kind of given a color gain to that concrete texture. So we've still got the kind of texture of the concrete, but we're still keeping the color and retaining that nice color we had before as well. So once you're happy with your material input there, we're gonna go back and now you can see it's now loaded into our tiles as well. There are a few more options you can have with the tiles. We can change the pattern of them. You can switch around the sort of bonds if you want them to be more like a brick bond here, our half running bond, there's lots of different options. So it's good to kind of have a look through those to sort of try out the different options that work for you that way. So once you're happy with your tile look, we're then gonna go and create a bit of relief to make it look like these tiles are projecting forward slightly. And to do that, I'm just gonna hit back to go back to our material editor. And we're gonna open up under maps, we're gonna open up the bump mapping to create a slightly uneven surface to our tiles and make the mortar look like it's recessed back from the face of the tile. So opening up the bump setting, we're gonna turn that option on and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to right click on my blue square under my diffuse. We're going to copy this image from the diffuse and we're going to paste it in the bump rather than creating a brand new material. This way, when I go in to edit it, it will already have my 8x8 grid in there for me. So the tile and the bump map and the diffuse map will match up accordingly because you don't want your bump map to not match with your diffuse and therefore the relief doesn't look quite right on your tiles. So for the bump map, I'm gonna remove the texture I've put in there just by cutting it out. And we're gonna make the tile color a white tile. And we're gonna remove the variance there. And I'm gonna make the mortar color a black mortar, like so. And what that will tell V-Ray is it will say wherever the color is black on this map, it should push the texture in slightly. And wherever the color is white, it should push the texture out slightly. And what that would do is it will recess that mortar slightly in our texture to make it look like it's slightly sunken back. So if we go back here, and I'm gonna up the bump amount to around a five, and we'll have a look in our preview here. You can see now that my mortar is slightly recessed behind that tile. We've got a nice little shadow that's forming around the edges of the tiles, which just makes them look a little bit more realistic and like that mortar is slightly set back from the face of the tile, as it would be if you were having a kind of real tile in real life there. So there you can see that that's working quite nicely there as well. Now the last thing we're gonna to add to our tiles is a little bit of reflection to make them slightly shiny. And to do that, I'm gonna open up my reflection tab and same again, I'm gonna copy the map from my bump map and we're gonna paste it in the reflection color. And what this will mean is that our mortar won't be reflective, but the face of our tiles will because we've got a black mortar line, which equals a reflection of zero and a white tile color, which equals a reflection of 100% effectively. So there you can see at the back here that we've now got this kind of glossy reflection on our tiles. And you can always lower the glossiness to make it a bit more diffused if you like.
The final thing I might do with this is just line up the edge of my tile to the bottom of my object. The easiest way to do that is to find your object in Rhino, we'll just minimize this, go back to your texture mapping option, click on this little icon next to the XYZ position and it just allows you to place and align the texture to a certain point. So I'm just picking this point at the bottom of my geometry there. And what that means is if I reload up the render, the tiles will now be aligned to that bottom line and we'll just wait for this to refresh. There we go. So you can see now the texture is nicely aligned to my geometry. And that was a quick tutorial on how to create a tile material in V-Ray for Rhino. It's really useful technique this one because you can switch out the diffuse map for any color or any sort of texture you want for your tiles. So it's very versatile and it's very easy to create these random textures with no repeating patterns in your tiles as well. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you want any other tutorials on material creation in V-Ray or Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel and thank you for watching.